Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. So I'm sitting here at my desk and I got my telly out. And I just want to share some of my favorite jazz chords. And um, we'll break them down a little bit. You know, I'll show you how I like to use them. And um, nothing too crazy. You know, I'm not going to go too in depth because I could sit here all day and talk about, you know, cool voicings and, and explore and. Uh, uh, the video would just be way too long. So we'll spend a few minutes on each one, you know, just enough for you guys to learn them and uh, get a little bit of an understanding and hopefully, you know, be able to incorporate them into your own playing. So uh, got the telly out today because uh, I just give my, figured I'd give my fingers a little bit of a break. You know, we're going to be doing a lot of chords. So I've got some lighter strings. Um, plus it just sounds amazing, so there's that. Um, and if you're interested in hearing all about this guitar, I do have a full review of it. And I'll put a link somewhere up here, so you can click that if you're interested. Also, I'll put it in the description, so uh, go ahead and check that out. Um, also, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Um, and uh, uh, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and found it helpful. I really appreciate all the support. and. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, these chords are going to be all fretted. We're not going to be using any open strings because I want them to be movable, uh, you know, and transposable to any key. So, um, and also, uh, we're not going to be doing anything that's too crazy, like, stretch-wise. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to show off here. I'm not trying to make, make things difficult. We're going to be doing realistically grabbable voicings that are cool and useful. Um, made, I mean, if I, you know, if I tweak some chords here and there, I may do a little bit of a stretch, um, but uh, the, the, the baseline chords are gonna be uh, pretty achievable for, for most people with uh, average size hands. So with that in mind, let's get into it. So the first one is going to be, it's gonna be like this. And, uh, this is at the 7th fret on Barnier Cross 5 strings. And I'm putting my middle finger on the uh, B string 8th um, fret. And then I'm putting my pinky on the 10th uh, fret of the D string. And uh, what I'm getting here is, a, uh, is like a C major, C major 7 with a 9 or a C major 9 with a 7th on top. First inversion, because we have the third, um, third on the bottom. Really nice chord, um, a little bit richer than you know the standard drop two. You know, very nice sparkly chord. Um, if you have a bass player and he's laying down a C, this is a really great chord to play. And uh, yeah, I remember the first time I ever heard this one was uh, George Benson. Uh, his version of Tenderly. Really beautiful. As soon as I heard it, uh, I figured it out. I, it, was just, it, was, it was just such a great sounding chord. And um, I, I stole that and put it into my arrangement of Tenderly, so yeah. But anyway, back to the seventh fret here. Key of C. Um, at the seventh fret, just because it's kind of a good sweet spot for this chord, easy to grab. And um, if we uh, flip gears here and think about this uh, as the relative minor, so we go to A minor. We have an A minor nine chord with an 11 in there, that nice crunchy 11 sound. So again, you know, C major, A minor, relative major, minor, you can use this chord uh, as a uh, richer, fuller C major 9 with a 7th on top or an A minor 9 with a 9 on top. Um, both are great, and again, you know, a little bit richer, a little bit um, more interesting than this chord, which if you're at all if you have any experience in jazz, you've probably played something like this before. 
nothing wrong with that one, but you know, if you're just looking for that extra little, uh, extra little sparkle, this is a great one. And uh, real quick, if you move it down to the second fret, um, now we're in the key of G major or E minor, and you can actually uh, throw in that low E string. Great, you know, soloistic chord. Um, you don't you don't need your to rely on your bass player. Um, nice full six six string, uh, you know, nice full six string voicing. So um, I like it a lot. And um, if you tune down to drop D, you know, everything all the notes will move up two frets, and you can just bar across and get that bass note. You know that bass note uh, all over the place. Um, and uh, Ted Green did that a lot, you know, he did a lot of uh, songs and uh, a lot of arrangements with the drop D voicing, or drop D tuning, so uh, he'd, you know, you'd hear this sound in his uh, playing quite a bit. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm going to keep going here, and uh, I'm going to head back up to this 7th uh, fret. And actually, just real quick, if I take off this top string, I'm going to take off this B here and uh, play these four strings. Um, I'm left with a uh, kind of a cool sounding chord, and it's uh, really what this is. It's um, a couple ways to look at it, but uh, we're going to first look at it as a C add 9, with a uh, first inversion C add 9 chord. And we kind of had like a major 9 sound before, so we just take away that major 7, and we're left with a C add 9, just like our good old cowboy, you know, open C add 9 chord. This is just an inversion of it. Very cool. Um, you can also look at this as a, um, as like an E minor 7 with a sharp 5, because you have like your minor 7 voicing right here. And then I just move that fifth up one fret, one half step. So there's a couple ways to look at it. It's got kind of, you know, a couple, it's got, you can use it in, in many ways. And because of that, you know, because it's kind of got this vagueness to it, um, uh, back in back at Berkeley, you know, Mick Goodrick used to call this chord Fred. Fred, and uh, that's what I call it today. So, you know, literally when I'm, if I want to use this chord in an arrangement, I'll literally write, you know, Fred, you know, E Fred or whatever, you know, C Fred. But um, it's kind of the the idea here is it's really just a cool contemporary uh, sound. Um, I don't even really think of it as a chord. Um, it's kind of an interesting constant structure. You know, you just you just you know. Uh, through that major seventh in there, but um, yeah, it's just an interesting sound, you know, to kind of help you break out of uh, break out of some particular harmony. That's the way. That's typically how I use it if I just want to go outside, um, you know. It just sounds good all the time. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. You know, <laughs> um, another voicing would be like right here at the if I go twelfth fret. Whoops. Just typical, um, it will make minor seventh, E minor seven there. Take the B string, sharp at fifth, and then just just move it all over the place. You know. Um, again, just kind of this nice punchy, you know, sound that you know you can you can experiment with and 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 you know try to uh, again just kind of try to break away from you know a typical chord progression or something like that um, but uh, yeah so Fred you know again kind of like a uh, major triad with an add nine or a minor seven with a sharp five you know just a cool sound um, anyway moving on 
Uh, we're gonna get into the realm of melodic minor here. This is the next voicing. So we're actually, uh, now we're in the key of, or now we're in the uh, tonality of, uh, of E melodic minor. And uh, this is another five note voicing. So my first finger is on the, on the uh, A string, 10th fret. My middle finger is barring across the D string and G string at the 11th fret. My pinky is at the uh, B string, 12th fret. And then my ring finger is coming in and squeezing into the 11th fret of the high E string. And this is a melod this is just a, uh, again, it's kind of like uh, if, you, if I throw that E in the bass there, it's like an E minor, um, E minor six major seven or something like that, you know, E minor six right here. Minor six with a nine, minor six, nine, major seven. The thing about melodic minor is you can pretty much just throw a bunch of notes out and they work with every mode, like every root. So this one can also function, like if I go for the, uh, the fourth mode of E melodic minor, A, A Lydian dominant, you know, it kind of functions as that, uh, as a good sharp 11 sound. So if you see like an A7 sharp 11, um, you know, chord, this is a nice one. Um, you know, also like G augmented, obviously that's alone, that's kind of what this chord is, because you know, we have the G as the, as the lowest note, and then uh, we got a, like a sharp four and a sharp five in there. So there's that. Um, and then um, probably the, uh, you know, one of the most common uh, uses of melodic minor, the alter dominant, so you know, that seventh degree, the, uh, the D sharp there. Um, it's just a great, uh, like a D sharp seven altered quarter, or you know, E flat, however you wanna look at it. And um, so yeah, just a really nice uh, versatile melodic minor chord. And actually the thing is like, if you, again, if you take away this, this top note, you're left with this. And all this is, is just this voicing right here. So it's like an A13 with a nine on there. We all probably played this voicing, which by itself is extremely useful and cool in jazz. I could do an entire video just on this voicing alone. It's another one of those that has like, you can look at it as, you know, a number of different uh, ways. You know, you can call it a couple different things, but uh, anyway. All we're doing is we're just moving that over a set of strings. So now we have room for one extra note. We're putting that really colorful, we're putting that really colorful note on top. So, um, so yeah, really great melodic minor voicing and um, you know, just have some fun with that one. Actually, if, if we, I'm gonna move this down to the, uh, this is now my first fingers at the fourth fret, same voicing. Uh, it is possible to, uh, to kind of get like that altered dominant sound, like the root on there. So, um, I'm actually changing this a little bit. I'm taking my, that top note, and I'm moving it up one fret. So now I just bar my pinky across. And now I have my middle finger free putting that uh, root on the bottom. So this chord is an A, A sharp nine, flat nine, flat 13. Almost every, almost every tension, every, every alter tension in there. It's really great for, really great for harmonics too. But uh, I move this note on top up one fret because I don't, I don't really want to double that root and I can be a little more colorful. Get that flat nine on there. A little, this is, that gets to be a little bit too high. I don't know, I just, I like this voicing a little bit lower. So, melodic minor, really cool. We're gonna come back to that a little bit later. But, uh, 
Moving on, here's a, uh, here's a Kurt, uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel voicing. Now this is particularly interesting because it's a nice, rich, major voicing with the root on top, which is kind of hard to find this low on the guitar. And um, I was watch I went to a clinic of his many years ago, and um, somebody asked him about chords, and you know, he kind of went on a little bit how he likes to view chords, and then. He ended with saying, like, you know, and, and here's one of my favorite chords. And he said, this is just a, uh, you know, a major seventh with the root on top and the seventh on the bottom or something like that. And yeah, so if we're in the key of D flat here, well, first of all, the, uh, the notes are, my pinky's going to be at the uh, fourth fret of the, uh, of the low E string, sixth string. Then my uh, middle finger is barring across the third fret of the A string and the D string. My ring finger is on the third fret of the G string. And my first finger is on the second, of the B, uh, second fret of the B string. So again, if we're in the key of D flat, if we think of it this way, we do have that root on top. And that major seventh is, uh, is you know, closer to the bass. sounding chord. The fifth is on the bottom. And typically like this interval, minor nine, is a big no-no. But for whatever reason, in this case it just sounds good. Again, it's an interesting way to, to voice the root on top, you know, especially if you're doing a lot of chord melodies or, or anything like that, you know. And whenever you get down here, you know, you're trying to and you know, you're trying to uh, resolve to the root in, in this range, it's a little bit tricky because everybody has that like sixth voicing, which is fine, but you know, it's, you know, it just gets so bland after a while after you use it, you know, dozens of times. But this one's really, this one's really nice. Uh, I, I like it a lot. Nice way to end a song or, you know, just throw it in uh, whenever, you, whenever you need to. Um, give that richness, you know, and that root on top. So I, I will say that this one probably is best um, only in this area of the guitar, like, you know, I'm going to go C, D flat, D, E flat, E. Once you get up past E, in my opinion, it just starts to, uh, it sounds okay, right? It just starts to get a little bit too, I don't know, it just doesn't quite work for me up there. So kind of, you know, these, the, the, this, you know, also you can go like B. I'm not sure if that one works, but. So just in this lower range, you know, when you get those, if you need to voice a root on top, that's, that's a good way to do it. Um, again, kind of breaking the rules with that, like, you know, major seven, as, as he called it, you know, um, in the lower part of the chord, but um, just just sounds interesting, man, you know, what can I say? Now, if, uh, for D flat in particular, um, you can get a really cool sharp 11 sound uh, just by leaving the G string open. I love ending, I love ending songs on this chord. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that one. Uh, okay, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, so here is, a, uh, here is just an, uh, a dominant nine chord uh, with the root on top. Um, also kind of a very, very like, a, kind of like a pianistic sounding chord. And um, what all this is, it's just a uh, minor seven flat five, I'm at the seventh fret here. So this is E minor seven flat five, and I'm just barring my pinky across to uh, to get that uh, eighth fret on the high E string. So this is a C nine chord, first inversion with the root voiced on top. And again, it's just kind of a great you know, just kind of a great dominant sound to use. 
obviously we have the C9, you know, typical voicing here, right there. But again, if you're playing with a bass, if you have a bass player, if you're playing in a group and that the bass is, you know, laying down your roots for you, uh, this one's a little bit more interesting for for you as a as a comper or you know, just to fill out that harmony. Um, and really, you know, just move it all over the place. So. I like this one a little bit better than, um, this is a slightly different chord, but like a 13. I mean, I like to mix it up, but you know. A 13 chord, another dominant sound with the root on top, but I don't know, it's just a very nice, just a very nice uh, smooth sound of this chord. Um, another way to voice, you know, like a nine chord with a root on top this one, but this one's kind of a little bit funky. I don't necessarily, it, it might clash a little bit in some in some areas, but this one just, again, it's just so smooth. So, again, just a regular old E minor 7 flat 5, which, you know, we chop off the, if we chop off the root from the bottom, a C9 chord, just take off the root. All we're left with is E minor 7 flat 5. And now I'm just going to put that root on top. So yeah, nice uh, nice dominant 9, nine chord there. And um, kind of along those lines. Now, this uh, this whole voicing here, you know, with the E minor 7 flat 5, this, this voicing actually right here, is pretty much the same, is, is exactly the same right here, and all I'm gonna do is put that C right there, now I'm barring across the seventh fret, and I'm getting this exact same voicing here. And um, that's just a, another way to play this, this nine chord that you know you may not think of right away. We're so used to going to this, you know. But, you know, another option is here. And um, following up, or going, uh, keeping this voicing in mind, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharp that. I'm going to do a sharp 11. So like a C9 sharp 11. So I'm going to move this G down to F sharp. And there's this chord just voiced over starting on the sixth string. And uh, that's just another option for that. Now again, I'm going to chop off this root, and um, now I'm going to add this uh, this 13 on here. So this one, uh, again, we're getting into the realm of melodic minor. So these melodic minor voicings, again, pretty much have every use within the, the ton tonality of melodic minor. So. You know, in this case, we're, we're, we're thinking that this is like a C, you know, sharp 11 with 13 on it. C Lydian dominant is from G melodic minor. So there we go. There's, oops, sorry, there we go. So, um, this is just a really interesting voicing. Now I'll admit this one's this one is tough for me to grab on the fly, so um, if I if I use it, it's probably going to be in an arrangement, um, you know, that I practice and rehearse. I don't necessarily have the best luck getting this one, you know, um, kind of you know um, off the top of my head. But uh, again, just to the way I'm voicing, the way I'm playing this is my middle finger is at the seventh fret. Um, and it's actually barring across a couple strings, my pinky, and this is on the A string. My pinky is here on the D string at the uh, eighth fret. Again, middle finger is barring across the G string, seventh fret. Ring finger is on the B string, seventh fret. And then my first finger is reaching up there to the uh, E 
string on the uh, on the fifth fret. And again, I like a C thirteen, C you know thirteen sharp eleven. If we kind of just go, you know, think about G melodic minor. works with pretty much any root, like a B, B flat augmented sound, augmented major 7, um, F sharp, alter dominant. That's not quite as good as other ones, but, but yeah, just a cool melodic minor sound. So let me see what else I had here, I took a few notes. Um, so let's see, another one, uh, another one that's kind of similar to Fred is, um, is going to be like this, so this is a, uh, what I'm doing here is barring across four strings, this is a smaller voicing, only four notes, and uh, third fret barring across four strings. And then my uh, ring finger's at the fifth fret of the G string. My pinky's at the fifth fret of the of the B string. And I get this uh, cool sounding chord. Now what this is, the way I'm going to think about this is it's a C major triad with an F with a fourth somewhere in it. And when I take the inversions, you know, obviously it moves around. It kind of sounds of these have different sounds, but here's my C major triad right here. F on the F on the bottom, and again, this this has many different depending depending on your perspective, depending on the context of the song. This can be called many different things, you know. You put it like a D in the bass. It's kind of like a D minor nine with an eleven. G in the bass, it's kind of like a, uh, um, you know, G 13 sus or something like that. With an A in the bass, it's like an F major sounding chord, you know, F major 9. So there's many different uses for it, but again, just kind of focusing on the voicing itself. Um, this is really what I would consider like a Berkeley voicing back when I was there. Everybody, all the cool players were using this, were overusing this really. It's just, you know, taking some inversions of it. This one's a cool one. A little bit of a stretch there, but you know, here's my C triad. I put the F right here. Um, yeah, here's, here's another cool voicing of it. So here's my C triad right here. Right, the fifth fret. I'll put the F right here at the eighth eighth fret of the A string. So, you know, maybe like uh, what's this one? Is that? So pretty much, you know, anywhere you have these C triads, you can squeeze an F in. It's a really nice shimmery, you know, sparkly chord that. Um, very, again, very contemporary sounding, kind of like a, like a Pat Metheny-esque, you know. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's this one here? Um, oh, what would this one be here? So, yeah. That one's a little bit tricky to grab. Actually, I can go like this. Really cool chord, fun to play around with, and um, you know, I, I'd say I'd use it kind of mostly as a um, as a subdominant sound. So again, that D D minor, that D minor sound, move it up to like F minor. You know, another one. Again, just like Fred works well with like a constant structure, you know, um, type thing, so you can experiment. You know, um, 
endless possibilities there. If I mix that and Fred, let's see, let's see what we have here. Let's uh, try some Fred. You know, it's just uh, it's just a uh, kind of another punchy sound that you can try to escape some uh, some harmonic boundaries with, and uh, you know, have a good time. So I think that's about it. That's all I got for today. Um, you know, I hope you got something out of this video. Um, again, I just love you know playing these chords and tweaking things to get new sounds. So. Um, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Um, again, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you next time. So have a great day, and take care.